Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Scientist and Director, RSA Laboratories, Ari Jules. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure and a great honor to host this year's Cryptographers Panel. As in past years, we're privileged to have with us four legendary founders of the field. This year, we also have a very interesting special guest. So please join with me in welcoming Whit Diffie, Martin Hellman, Ron Ravest, Adi Shamir, and Brian Snow. Well, this year has uh, certainly been chock full of interesting events. A uh, landmark RSA factorization, major uh, espionage attacks against U.S. corporations, um, a very interesting new crypto system invented. So many possibilities to discuss today. Uh, perhaps each of you can take a few minutes, though, and tell our audience what thoughts are foremost in your minds these days. What are you thinking about? What are, what are you working on? Whit, would you like to begin? Well. I think for anybody who doesn't know, the most important security development of the past year is that I have left Sun Microsystems, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now available to do more interesting work. Um, I don't think I'll actually say very much more. I think I'm looking forward to some of the questions that have been cooked up and the, the discussion that's going to follow. I'll give you, as is my custom, a couple of obits one of whom is, will be known to the mathematicians in the audience, a man named Sean Wiley died. Sean Wiley was, is best known to some people for indiscreet memos saying that he couldn't find any fault with James Ellis' argument in favor of public key cryptography, but he wished he could. Um, he was chief mathematician. He worked at GCHQ at, at Bletchley Park. He was off back to Cambridge for a while. He's an algebraic topologist. He is the author of Hil one of the authors of Hilton and Wiley uh, algebraic topology, a major figure in uh, Cambridge mathematics, 20th century. Returned in the 50s as HR, uh, the head mathematician. Uh, the other one will be known to almost nobody. Uh, his name is Ned Newberg. He's a man of very good taste. I, I first met him at the second Eurocrypt. Uh, in Udine in uh, Italy in 1983. Uh, he's an NSA man, and he tried to recruit me. And uh, the other thing he did at that meeting, I was a small, wiry, incredibly energetic guy. When the Chinese guy got up to speak, he was just all over it, taking notes, running around the corner of the room, get a better look at the blackboard. Uh, last saw him a couple of years ago, and his death took me completely by surprise. Um, the last thing I'll just comment on is I had the privilege uh, about two weeks ago, of three weeks, whatever it is, going to the Information Assurance Exposition at the Oprah Land Hotel in Nashville. Uh, this, is the, this was three days before Sarah Palin held forth in the same venue. Um, and it was described to me when I was told I should try to get an invitation as the uh, crypto custodians con. Uh, conference. This is where you go to find out, you know, what new kinds of equipment are coming out of NSA, what you're going to be having to account for, and this, that, and the other. And I'd say two things. Incidentally, if you think this conference is bad, try going to that one. <laughs> it has four tracks, right, all running simultaneously with no space left anywhere, except I never got beyond the first track because it has six tracks within it. Okay. Uh, but one thing, two things I want to comment on. Uh, there was they seem to be taking Sweet B very seriously. I said when I talked about it and appeared in 2005 that I, you know, it was very much, very much a matter of principle. The issue of regulation says this is going to be authorized for this, that, and the other in approved implementations. And so I now see a good deal more evidence that there are approved implementations being developed and that the, uh, this may, in fact, give us a a new era of interoperability and, at some level, a greater harmony between the government organizations and the private sector. The other thing, um, say, there, 
they're revising the key management system, and they stamped everything they said for official use only, but I hope they won't be offended if I say this. They've modeled the user, they talked about modeling the user interface on Amazon. You get a web page, you need key, you go on your web page and you order key, or, you know, that's kind of like getting a, a text for your Kindle. On the other hand, maybe you need a hard copy. If you need a piece of crypto equipment, you go on the same web page and you order it and give it a defense courier service address and they ship it somewhere. So I, uh, I'm noting in two respects a convergence between the, uh, the public world and the slightly less secret world. Well, Whit focused on uh, people who died. I'm going to focus on people who lived. Um, and thinking about That's some of being born. events of the last year, uh, I think a key event was February 7th of this year. David Kahn turned 80. And thinking back 40 years ago, uh, people here are building on the work that was done 20, 30 years ago by some of us in some cases. But in certainly Whit's, in my case, I think yours, Ron, and I just found out in Brian's case also, the Code Breakers, which was David Kahn's best-selling book uh, from the late 60s, played a key role in our getting interested in cryptography and also in providing background. Beyond that, when Witt and I first joined forces and the literature was very minimal and very hard to get a hold of, David had amassed an amazing library um, at, in Great Neck, New York, which he made available to us, copying things for us, letting us take things out to copy, which showed great trust. So uh, I'd like to wish David Kahn a happy 80th birthday on all our parts for his part in leading to in RSA 2010. Yeah. The, the other person I'd like to mention briefly is Ralph Merkel. This is connected with a, an award that Wit, Ralph, and I will be receiving in June. It's been announced already. Uh, it's a major IEEE award, the Hamming Medal. And Witt and I have many awards, Ralph has uh, a few, and deserves much more uh, credit than, than he gets. So just to lay it out here, uh, Ralph was a master's student working at Berkeley, uh, and he came up with the idea of secure communication over insecure channels with no prearrangement, and then he wrote on his project description, which the professor said didn't make much sense, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And he had a second project that the professor preferred, but uh, he, he went with the first anyway. He dropped the course, I recently found out, because of that. And his paper, which appeared in the CACM a year, <clears throat> roughly a year after Wits and mine, New Directions in Cryptography, has a submission date which is prior to ours, but he had a reviewer who said, you can't do that. Whereas we had an editor who got our paper in from the final submission in July 76 to November 76, unheard of, uh, rapidity, just that. Yeah, but the issue didn't actually come out till February. <laughs> well, and I'm sure Ralph's issue didn't come out till four months after, too. So uh, I was very pleased to see that uh, Merkel was getting some of the credit that, that he deserves, along with Witt and myself, for inventing public key cryptography. I'd like to uh, respond to the question with, with uh, some of the things I've been involved with or that have caught my eye over the last year. And most of these things have seeds that go quite a ways back, and so I'd like to start off with some of the seeds, too, uh, in sort of chronological order with the seeds. In 1978, uh, Mike Dutuzos and Len Edelman and I wrote a paper on, on keeping databases private by having all of the data be encrypted and working on the ciphertext without having to decrypt it. It seemed sort of fanciful at the time, and we weren't able to, to do it, and it's been an open problem since then. And this past year, it's been amazing to see the problem solved Craig Gentry has come up with, uh, actually more than one now, proposal for achieving homomorphic encryption, a way to encrypt data so that a server, a cloud computer, say, could uh, work on, uh, on this data without having to decrypt it and do arbitrary computations. It's amazing stuff. Uh, it runs in polynomial time in the security parameter. It, it's uh, like security parameter to the 10th power, which is a polynomial only a theoretician could love. But it, it, so it's not practical yet, but it was just an amazing uh, breakthrough. Um, and we're continuing to see, to see breakthroughs even on things that have been done a long time ago. One that caught my eye that I, I wasn't involved with, there was this, uh, a seed was, was the paper that Adi wrote with Rich Chappelle back in 1981 on breaking the knapsack uh, scheme. And uh, Adi and Rich had a wonderful scheme which had time uh, 2 to the n over 2 for an n-element knapsack and space 2 to the n over 4. And that's been an open problem now for 30 years 
uh, as to whether that could be improved or not. And finally, 